Bruins against the Bruins here in Boston, Game Seven. <laughs> what the fuck, Pen Pen? It's early in the morning. I can sleep when I want. I don't have bridge duty until the afternoon. Your current trophy wife wants a life insurance policy three times the size of the policies you had to purchase for your previous mistakes. You'll have to be more specific. The holidays are busy. Ah, uh, yeah, and there was a glow from the crystal. What was that all about? I suspected as much, but as usual, you didn't explain. Great. Thanks for that. <laughs> oh shit! Pen Pen, you magnificent bastard! That's brilliant! So, now what? <laughs> That's right. Thanks for the heads up. Truth here, and welcome to another mid-year English dub review here on Otaku Evolution. We're halfway through the year, well, technically more, and it's time to look at the English dubs for anime I've covered thus far in 2019. As usual, I'd like to start by stating that normally I prefer to watch anime in its native Japanese, preferably with as quality English subtitles I can get. But that's not necessarily a knock against English dubs in general, because I rather enjoy several of them. I just have a preference. I've been told I'm very picky when it comes to dubs, and I'm certainly very vocal about the ones I dislike. Fortunately, there weren't any truly cringeworthy ones in this crop, and we even had some rather good ones. I spoke briefly on how Yoridin Samurai Troopers became bastardized as Ronin Warriors in North America because of marketing, 
But aside from name changes in the White Armor backstory, it stayed pretty much on script, and the acting, while not holding up that well, was decent for its time. Nowadays, it's more of a curiosity, a quaint relic of the past. Probably like the show itself. I do still have an affinity for Paul Dobson as Anubis, though, and Jane Perry's Kyra was on point as well. You've come back to us at last. You're free, Kyra. Ronan Warriors was an ocean dub, and Ocean, in Canada, did a ton of anime dubs before a lot of studios really got going in the U.S. One of these anime was Vision of Escaflone, which they dubbed for Bandai Entertainment. And they did likewise years later for the movie. I mean, before Funimation got the license and redubbed it. The Ocean dub is nothing special. It's pretty standard for Ocean, but has the odd solid performance or two. Andrew Francis is delightfully over-the-top wicked as the Landau, for instance, and while it's a small role, Scott McNeil inhabits Jujuka the Beastman well. I see. You're the dragon I've heard about. Such strength he has. Hey, tell me. Get behind me. Okay. <laughs> Oh no, I'm completely drenched. I do hate the rain, it makes me so depressed. I haven't heard the Funimation dub of the movie, but if it's like their dub of the TV series, it's probably just... okay, and not any better or worse than the Ocean one. But at least you won't have to listen to... Well, never mind, let's not get controversial here. I mean, it's not like there's any other anime where that voice actor was... Oh, right. Megazone 2 3 Part 2. ADV's Industrial Smoke and Mirrors dubbed Megazone 2 3 Part 2 for its release. A dub starring Vic, not literally a piece of shit, Your Honor, because he's not feces, Mignana, Allison Easy Paycheck for this one, Keith, and Monica Rial. So I'm biased. Fuck off. To be fair, Vic's performance isn't terrible in this dub. In fact, nobody's performance is bad in this dub. It's just that none of their performances are great either. I do like that they lean into the 80s cheese, but they still have to work with material that doesn't give their characters much to do drama-wise. You'd think the inevitable destruction of all they know would elicit some deeper thought, but the anime's mostly just a gang hanging out. And yeah, I ended up wanting to hang out with them, so it couldn't have been too bad. Vic's still a creep, though. An example of a dub where the actors are given more to work with, and make good use of it, is the one from Morabito that was done by Bang Zoom. Ably led by Cindy Robinson's Balsa, with shades of Mary Elizabeth McGlynn's Major Kusanagi in it, and supported by Mona Marshall, Peter Doyle, and Barbara Goodson, this is a series I can enjoy nearly equally in either Japanese or English. It might not be a Grand Pantheon level dub, but it's pretty solid. While we're on dubs from California, we might as well visit my favorite anime dub studio, Animes, who dubbed the very inaccurately named Ninku the Movie and the Blackjack OVA. You could tell that while it wasn't one of their best dubs, the folks at Animes were trying hard to get what they could from the piece of fluff that was the Ninku movie, with Mona Marshall's goofy, good-natured Fusuke and Wendy Lee supplying the necessary attitude for Rihoki. You even got some performances out of the very underrated Doug Stone, and you could even hear Kirk Thornton in this. Neat. We are the great Ninku Masters. I suggest you run off while you still have a chance. Otherwise, say your prayers, for you three are about to meet your fate. All right, here you go. Don't mess with the Ninku. I did it. Hmm. I'm quite surprised. And I'm very pleased as well. Huh? You are? Yes. My brothers and I have long looked forward to the day when we would meet the renowned members of the Ninku clan. What? I... But why? We want to fight against you, of course, to determine who's the strongest Ninku or us. <laughs> Is that so? Boss, <gasps> come back! Hey, there's no shame in being afraid of us. You don't have to act so macho and cool. <laughs> Speaking of Kirk Thornton, as I've stated in the past, he's a quality blackjack. 
I believe he's just as much the character as Akio Otsuka. He really has this very dry but imposing sound that cuts through all the bullshit. You really believe that his blackjack is an expert in his craft. But I have more episodes to review for this, so I'll leave it at that for now. I was obviously going to encounter some also ran dub studios, which gives us now and then here and there's dub by Todd Studios, for CPM, and Coastal Carolina's Crusher Joe OVA dub. The former features New York veterans Dan Green, Rachel Lillis, and Ted Lewis, but also Crispin Freeman. Still, it's overall just a tolerable dub. Adequate, but not particularly noteworthy. Nothing to celebrate or condemn, it's just sort of... there. The bandit, the bandit, the bandit! Kill that kid! Get the pendant off him! That also describes the pretty bland but non-offensive Crusher Joe the Ultimate Weapon Ash dub. There's only so many ways I can say, yeah, it wasn't ear-bleedingly bad, but I'd rather watch the Japanese version, if at all. Nobody really stands out either positively or negatively, so there's not much to report. I'm alive! Hey, guys! Somebody bitch me! I'm dreaming! A pizza is worth a thousand words. Ah! Well, I was alerting you to the fact that you're not dead, Ricky! Oh, oh God, you stop it! You fight like a girl! <laughs> Like a girl. An incredibly underrated dub studio, New Generation Pictures, did the dub for Reader Die of the TV, scripted and directed by the talented Tellers and Jaffe. While it's perhaps not as strong as their Helsing or Helsing Ultimate dubs, it's a quality dub overall with great performances by relative unknowns like Rachel Hirschfeld, Wendy Thompson, and Helena Taylor. It was a bold experiment to use smaller named voice actors that paid off beautifully. So kudos to Mr. Jaffe and the actors alike. You partitioned off the room? Yes. After all, Anita is getting to be that age. Where is she? That was a nice bath. Everything past this is my territory. Don't come in here without my permission. All right. And please remember to knock when you come over here as well. What's the matter? This book is just so, so, so. You haven't fully recovered yet, so don't stay up too late. Night. Good night. So, so. Michelle, give me back my pillow. Discotech brought new life to loop on the third Legend of the Gold of Babylon, and if it weren't for copyright dragons, I could go into more specifics. But despite the movie itself being lackluster, you could tell that the Blue Jacket cast was having a blast dubbing it. Go try finding my review of this feature. There are clips with sound included. I hope Discotech dubs or even redubs more Lupin features in the future. And now, my friends, the dregs. I saved these for last not just because they were the dubs I covered most recently, but because they're the most agonizing to get through. The Dragon Ball dubs. I always have to begin by reminding the viewer I'm actually quite fond of Funimation's recent Dragon Ball dubs, from Z Kai to the new Z movies and Super. The scripts have gotten more accurate, the casting is better, and so is the acting. I'd still change a couple of roles here and there, but all in all, it's been on an upswing for a while now. That said, it's hard to get through the old dubs. Now, Sleeping Princess in the Devil's Castle has a dub that isn't so much awful, so much as half-baked and underserved. Besides taking some liberties with the script, I feel like the voice actors they chose for some of the roles just don't have much of an impact. For one, while I do enjoy the kind of raw, truly childlike sounding Goku of Sally Delgadillo, it sounds more like how a Peanuts character would sound, not like Goku. It lacks that innocent charm of Clinkenbeard's young Goku, or the wild fringe of Stephanie Nodalny's. Oh, Delgadillo is a better actress than Nodoni, sure, but she was a better Dende than a Goku. Lori Steele's young Krillin, on the other hand, remains solid. (laughs) 
<laughs> so long, sucker. <laughs> that was very nice. There are numerous issues with the Bardock TV special English dub. Completely unnecessary name changes, such as making Selipa Fascia, line changes that paint the characters or scenes differently, and just some plain bad voice acting hamper this tragic tale. Sunny Street is a competent Bardock, but he's about the only decent performance in this. Linda Young's Frieza is still cringeworthy. I don't even want to post a clip it hurts so much. Just watch this in Japanese with subtitles, folks. However, at least Fusion Reborn's dub is tolerable, though not particularly good. It's very inconsistent in both its script and level of performances, and sometimes it gets the jokes completely wrong by attempting to rewrite them or missing the timing. I suppose some of that can be chalked up to language differences, though. Shimmel's Goku and Sabbath's Vegeta are still not quite there, but it's a step up from their TV show deliveries, at the very least. Vegeta, thanks. For what? I should be thanking you, Kakarot. Nah, what do you mean? I loved every minute. Goodbye, my friend. I wish Funimation would go back and redub some of those old features. But then again, there are legions of fans that would protest and rage. The sort of people who probably think Vic Mignogna's a great guy. Or a halfway decent actor. Of which he is neither. Anyway, that's it for this half of the year. I'll be taking some time off, but I'll return in August with some favorites of mine. Until then, see ya! Ugh, I have such a headache.